It's worth mentioning that uh, Mongo database by itself is a database, but then you have this MongoDB native driver and they're not the same. Some people get confused when they try to install Mongo database native driver with NPM and they assume that uh, they don't need to do that because they already have Mongo database installed with Brew or vice versa. You need two of them in order for the mean stack to work. But just running a little bit ahead of myself with the full stack Angular generator, it comes with the database driver already and it's Mongoose, it's not MongoDB native driver. So this is just a more low level overview so you understand that you can use MongoDB by itself. You don't have to use Mongoose, you don't have to use any other libraries like uh, Monk, for example. You can use just the native driver. All of those libraries, they, uh, they uh, extend the MongoDB native driver. So if you learn native driver, it's very easy to learn something more complex like Mongoose which the generator uses. To install MongoDB we're using npm and then we're using dash dash safe to create a package.json entry. This is how you can establish the connection. The cool thing about it that uh, we're using this URL. It looks like an HTTP, like a regular URL, but it's actually it has MongoDB instead of HTTP. And then you can also put a username and a password here. So this is how you connect. You can connect to a remote database. For example, if you have AWS instance, your local host would not be. It would be something different. It would not be the local host if you're connecting to a remote database. And the ports also can change. So you would get that from your cloud provider. Collection.insert, very similar to the shell, but not exactly the similar because we're using, uh, it's asynchronous. Node.js you know, uses callbacks a lot, so we're using callback here, it's called callback pattern. Update, similarly, it has a callback, it has, uh, instead of two arguments, it has three arguments. Syntax is very similar, dollar sign set. Remove. Just one for one argument similar to the shell command and then the callback. The find is different because find returns a database cursor, which is kind of useless in Node.js. What we want to get, we want to get a JavaScript object or an array. And the way to do it is to invoke to array. And then in the callbacks, docs would be a normal JavaScript object. We could, which we could send to a client or process or do something with it. There is a Mongo database and Mongoose cheat sheet available online for free. Go ahead and take a look at it. Let's switch to AngularJS. The benefits of Angular are that it's supported by Google. It's good to have a huge technology company supporting a framework. It's good for prototyping. It has this thing called two-way binding, a lot of features. It does a lot of things for developers. And uh, we don't need to explicitly, manually work with the DOM. Angular does a lot of those DOM manipulation for us. So that's good. And uh, also, Angular is an MVC framework, so you get that separation of concerns. You get controllers, you get uh, routes, you have templates. What is two-way binding? Basically, you have models and views, and then you have models. Uh, the models communicate with views, and the views communicate with models. So it works two ways. For example, you have an input field in uh, on your web page you type some text and the variable is updated in a model in the in the code and then you update that variable programmatically or the data comes from the server maybe you have some new data and then uh, the view is updated automatically for you based on that data and no DOM manipulation means no jquery code Actually, it's an anti-pattern to use jQuery with Angular. It's, no, it's, it's a terrible way to use Angular if you use jQuery. So no more dollar sign button dot click. 
typical structure, you would have a route file, then in that route file, you would specify the template name and the controller name. The template would use some special Angular things, which are called ng directives or Angular directives. And then the controller would have uh, your Ajax or XHR calls to the server. This is how a router looks like. You have a module name, then you have URL, which is the URL that would be in your browser. For the slash, it's just nothing. So basically, it's like a home page. And then template URL property is the name of the file and the controller is the name of the controller. This is uh, how a template would look like. If you look carefully, there is a directive in gRepeat in the UL. What it does, it iterates over an array. So awesome things, it's a plural, it's an array of items, and the thing, it's a singular, it's just one item. So inside of that structure, in the li element, and in the a, in the anchor element, we can use thing.info in the curly braces, and thing.name, referring to that individual object from the collection of awesome things. There are more directives. This is just one of them. This is how you would write your Angular template. And then in the controller, we would want to get awesome things. So we would make a request to slash API slash things. And then we're using promises. So dot then it's a promises syntax. And in the callback, so arrow function, it's a ES6 callback. Instead of typing function and transferring this, it does it all automatically for, the, for us. And we just assign this dot awesome things to a data, to response that data. So this way, the awesome data will get an array from the server and uh, Angular magic kicks in and the view will get this data and uh, we will see a list of items. Then you can also have methods like add, delete, you can have any customer methods and submit post or delete requests using dollar sign HTTP service. So Angular has a lot of services. Dollar sign HTTP is one of them. It's a service for making Ajax and XHR requests. It's kind of similar to dollar sign dot Ajax from jQuery, but it's not really a jQuery, but it works very similarly. So what is Node.js? Node.js is the scalable fast web platform. It's very mature, 5.3 as of this uh, recording, supports of ES6 features by default, no need for any extra flags. And uh, we can use libraries like Lodash underscore and others like Jade on the browser and on the server. It's sometimes it's called isomorphic or universal JavaScript. I call it full stack JavaScript because on all three layers, we use JavaScript on the browser, on the server, and on the database. So advantages of Node.js. The biggest selling point is it's non-blocking IO, which makes it super, super efficient. Then uh, it's also very fast because it uses Google Chrome V8 engine, the same thing that runs in your browsers. It has a vibrant ec ecosystem, NPM, Node Package Manager, it hosts not only Node modules, now it hosts pretty much any JavaScript libraries or modules, even front-end, and uh, maybe even some other languages. We can reuse the code, and uh, the developer, basically the notion of a back-end developer uh, is dying because now the front-end developers, they can do the back-end work. So what is Node.js? Uh, basically, it's three, thing, three things at the core, V8, libf, and lib.io. One is event loop, another is asynchronous I.O., and another is abstraction. This is a nice chart that shows you basically that Node.js consists of two things, a bunch of C++ modules, like V8 engine and event loop, 
and then modules like http.net and file system fs to work with the file system and then on top of it you have javascript interface so there is actually a file called node.js if you go into github on a node.js repository you would find that this is this is uh, how the name came about and there is actual file node.js that talks with uh, c++ and it's actually very easy, very fast to write your own C++ module and then a JavaScript file to talk with that module. This is why Node.js became so popular in robotics, with drones, with Internet of Things. Because all of those technologies, they use uh, low-level C and C++, but then it's not fun to code in those low languages. So you would use a higher language like JavaScript, more expressive language that does a lot of things for you, like memory management for developers. This is an example of the node stack. So we have core modules at the very foundation, things like HTTP, FS, NET. Uh, NET is a foundation for HTTP. You can also use NET module to build other protocols like IRC, TCP, IP. Utils, query, then we have frameworks which are higher level abstraction. They build on top of HTTP, frameworks like Happy, Loopback, Sales, etc. And then we have database drivers. You can pretty much find, uh, you can find a database driver for pretty much any database, any major database available out there, MongoDB, CouchDB, Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, etc. For testing, we would use Mocha, SuperTest, Expect, Dependency Management, you want to use Bower and NPM, and for building, Webpack, Grunt, or Gulp. Those are, by the way, those are Node.js based tools as well. Authentication, I recommend using Passport. Yeoman is a code generator, and for process manager management, we would use PM2 if you want to deploy it to the cloud. Uh, why NPM rules? It has a lot of modules. So the orange line, it's a number of modules in Maven Central, Java, and then Ruby Gems, it's uh, uh, an in a red line. So number of modules in NPM is roughly twice the number of uh, Ruby Gems and Maven Central modules, Java and Ruby languages. So the next demo is the Node Console.